What's up guys, Sean here, and today we're going to talk about Snopes lying for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So I've noticed a trend amongst many conservatives and libertarians, both in the media and in the real world. And the trend that I've noticed is that conservatives and libertarians don't really get mad at people that admittedly are partisan members of the media. However, the thing that really gets under the skin of a lot of conservatives and libertarians are members of the media who pretend that they are not partisan, that act as if they are the arbiters of truth, when they are clearly just as biased, if not more biased, as other members in the admittedly left-wing media. This is one of the reasons why conservatives have made CNN a much bigger target than a network like MSNBC. MSNBC, with their hosts admittedly being progressive and their lean-forward campaigns, don't hide their biases as much as a network like CNN, which pretends to be a straightforward news agency. However, as we saw, and it was revealed to a lot of people during the Clinton campaign, and with actors like Piers Morgan and the way that they talked about guns, CNN is just as liberal, if not more liberal, than MSNBC is as a network. And this is the reason why criticism of CNN is so popular among right-wing circles. It's not just the fact that CNN is a left-wing news organization, which it is, it's the fact that they pretend that they're not. They pretend that they're somehow different and therefore above news organizations like MSNBC or Fox News, when they're just as partisan as either of those outlets. And it's not just CNN that draws this level of ire, it's anybody in the left-wing media who claims to be above the fray and an arbiter of facts or truth when they are clearly and openly politically biased. And a perfect example of an organization that has earned the mistrust of conservatives are fact-checking organizations like Snopes. Now, the idea of fact-checkers and having fact-checking organizations sounds great. Politicians on all sides of the aisle use talking points over facts, they try to appeal to emotion, and it can be difficult for normal people to parse out what's true and what's not true. So organizations that are dedicated to sifting through the evidence and finding out what's political nonsense and what's actually true are desperately needed. However, as we've seen with all the fact-checking organizations that we have and their previous fact-checks, they are not immune to petty partisan politics and having their results completely skewed by their own political bias. Now, a perfect example of how ridiculous ridiculous, partisan, and downright stupid fact-checkers can be is the Washington Post's analysis of Donald Trump's claim that when he served burgers to the Clemson football team or whatever Clemson team won whatever championship, that they were stacked a mile high. The Washington Post literally did a factual analysis of how tall the stack could have possibly been based on the number of burgers that were there. They did this analysis for the phrase stacked a mild high, which was obviously hyperbole. And no, that is not a joke. These are the objective fact checkers who are the arbiters of truth that are protecting our democracy. Political agenda, petty partisan interests, no way. They were just fact checking that claim because you, the American people, really needed to know that the burgers that Donald Trump bought for that team really didn't stack up to be that high. Now, the reason I started you out with that example is because I wanted you to understand how petty and partisan these fact-checking organizations can be when the subject of their fact-check is somebody that they don't like. Because when you understand how these fact-checking organizations treat people that they don't like, you understand videos like this one that Snopes put out in favor of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and how their opinion of her, the fact that they do actually like her, has informed the way that they frame this issue. Because what they show in this video completely supports conservatives' criticism of Ocasio-Cortez's obviously staged photos, yet they claim that the conservatives are wrong and Ocasio-Cortez is in fact correct, that she was actually having a legitimate emotional moment, despite the fact that the text of these claims completely confirm all conservatives' suspicions about these photos. But before I delve specifically into that video, I do want to give you a tiny bit of background around this issue so you can understand how we got here, because the way that we are here talking about Ocasio-Cortez's reaction is related to another issue where the media were completely derelict in their duty. And that was Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Instagram video where she claimed that the United States is having concentration camps at the southern border of the United States of America for people trying to get into the country. 
The United States is running concentration camps on our southern border. And that is exactly what they are. They are concentration camps. And um, if that doesn't bother you, I don't... Now, the big lie surrounding this Instagram live that the media is trying to perpetuate is the lie that Ocasio-Cortez was somehow not making a Nazi reference when she was talking about concentration camps at the southern border. And this lie, despite it being an obvious and ridiculous one, has been repeated time and time again by members of the left-wing media. Members of the media who actually call her out for her obvious Nazi reference have been shamed by other members of the media. If you want to criticize the shameful treatment of people at our southern border, fine. You'll have plenty of company, but be careful comparing them to Nazi concentration camps because they're not at all comparable in the slightest. Hey, Chuck Todd, take a good hard look at what your country is doing at the border. I wish he was as outraged about the concentration camps at the border uh, as he is about AOC's comments, right? So I'm gonna, again, go ahead and break it down for people who don't understand why they can be considered concentration camps. But first, let me just note, he totally misrepresented what AOC said. She did not compare them to Nazi concentration camps. And the fact that there's even a question, that there's even a debate on whether or not Ocasio-Cortez was making a Nazi reference is a black eye on the mainstream media and just shows that they will do anything, they will tell any lie to protect their own. Ocasio-Cortez, all in a single video, all in a short period of time, said concentration camps, something clearly associated, at least for Americans, something clearly associated with the Nazi party. The United States is running concentration camps on our southern border. And that is exactly what they are. They are concentration camps. She said that this was a sign of fascism. Fascism is the ideology of the Nazi party. Or if we are losing to an authoritarian and fascist presidency. If you think, oh, well, that could still be a coincidence. She could have been referencing something else, some other fascist regime that had concentration camps. She also added, never again. Never, I wanna to talk to the people that are concerned enough with humanity to say that we should not, that never again means something. Never again is an unambiguous phrase directly associated with the Nazi Holocaust against the Jewish people during World War II. When you say never again, concentration camps, and you add in fascism, it is 100% clear what you're talking about. There's no debate, there's no disputing it, that is exactly what she was talking about. And remember, this all comes in the context of a time where members of the radical left call every conservative Nazis. So any member of the left-wing media who's arguing that there is even a debate, let alone taking Ocasio-Cortez's side, like most of them have, are lying directly to your face and insulting your intelligence, assuming that you are too stupid to understand that never again is a direct reference to the Holocaust. She did not compare them to Nazi concentration camps. That never again means something. Now on the heels of all that, when the media was going to bat for Ocasio-Cortez, when they knew what they were saying about her was completely false, a photographer decided to release photos from last year of then-candidate Ocasio-Cortez at one of these detention centers posing and crying in front of a chain link fence. And these photos looked completely ridiculous. I'm showing them to you on screen right now. Now, because these photos look completely ridiculous, because they are in fact completely ridiculous, people started memeing them because even if she was looking at migrant children, which by the way, she wasn't, they would still be clearly publicity photos of her and her reaction to those migrant children and none of the photos feature any of the children that are supposedly the actual victims. This is a textbook case of virtue signaling. Look at how emotional Ocasio-Cortez was when she went to one of these detention centers. Now, I didn't bother to take any photos of what Ocasio-Cortez is getting emotional about because what she's looking at is not really that important. I mean, we're gonna tell you that it's important and we're gonna tell you that if you don't react like Ocasio-Cortez is reacting, then you don't care about children. But that's not what's actually important. What's important is that Ocasio-Cortez is really sad about it. 
What's important is that Ocasio-Cortez in this photo appears to be screaming no while pressed up against this fence. Now shortly after these photos were released, photos from other angles were released where you can clearly see the photographer trying to get the best possible angle of Ocasio-Cortez. We saw angles that showed what Ocasio-Cortez was seeing and she wasn't looking at any children. She was looking at what looked like a parking lot at the head of this facility. And because there was clearly nothing within view for Ocasio-Cortez to have these reactions of, these photos were ridiculous and people started memeing her. People started taking photos wearing all white in front of chain link fences with similar reactions to the obviously phony ones that Ocasio-Cortez was having. And this wasn't just people on the right doing this. A lot of people on the left were like, okay, I don't agree with Trump on detaining these migrants, but these photos are clearly all about you. They're about you posing and how you're reacting to this rather than the actual situation at hand. And because of all the memeing, because of how ridiculous these photos looked, the worm started to turn on Ocasio-Cortez and she started receiving a hefty amount of criticism. So in comes Snopes with a completely unbiased fact-checking video that purports to show that conservative criticisms of Ocasio-Cortez are false, while actually proving with better angles that the criticisms of her are 100% on point. So the first trick that these fact-checking organizations like to do is move the goalposts. So they're making the claim because people have pointed out that it looked like Ocasio-Cortez was looking at the parking lot of this facility, which it did by most of the angles, and it's still possibly true that she was looking at the parking lot of the facility, that conservatives were making the argument that she was not even at a detention facility of any kind, that she was just at a random parking lot. No conservative was making the claim that she was at a random parking lot. They were only pointing out that it looked like she was at a random parking lot and that there was nothing that you could possibly see from her angle that would make somebody have such an emotional reaction because no kids or anybody being detained were visible to the public. But Snopes is not interested in what conservatives are actually claiming about these photos. What Snopes is interested in is protecting Ocasio-Cortez. So they make it seem like the argument is about whether or not Ocasio-Cortez was at a detention facility. Nobody was making the point that all these photographers and all the celebrities who publicly went to this event last year didn't actually go to a facility. The point was is that she was making reactions that were clearly staged to stuff that she couldn't even see, but it was implied by her reaction that she was looking at something that was truly tragic. So Soaps, in their objective video that's defending Ocasio-Cortez, gives us a drone shot of the entire facility. And you know what you don't see at any point in this drone shot? You don't see any migrants, nor do you see any migrant children. So again, what was Ocasio-Cortez reacting to? What was this shot in reference to if you can't see anything? They then cut to quotes from the photographer who I'm assuming they interviewed for this piece, and the photographer is like, of course you couldn't see any children. Not seeing the children should not come as a surprise. And I 100% agree with the photographer that Snopes is quoting. Obviously, you shouldn't be surprised that you can't see the children. That would be something that people would want to hide from photographers and from press-hungry politicians. But if you can't see the children, then what is Ocasio-Cortez reacting to? The tents? Is she reacting to the tents? Is she reacting to the two Border Patrol people? Is she reacting to the police cars? Is she reacting to what appears to be a nearly empty parking lot for the facility that is holding these children? The reason conservatives are reacting and laughing at these photos is because they are clearly staged. Even Snopes fact check that supposedly debunks that has to reframe what conservatives are saying, but still admits that you can't see any children and you shouldn't expect to see any children from her angle. So if you can't see any children, what is this a reaction to? Oh, the photographer. The other thing that Snopes fact checks is that these photos weren't recently posted or recently uncovered as Infowars claims and they quote the photographer who took these photos. The only problem with referencing the photographer who took these photos to fact check this is not that it's necessarily false, but this is the same photographer who tweeted out originally these photos again this year 
and said in his recent tweet this year that these were unpublished photos from last year. So we're in this weird situation where Snopes is fact checking a media organization using a photographer that the media organization was reporting directly from because the photographer's original tweet was really misleading. He said they were unpublished photographs, previously unpublished photographs that he was putting out right now in his original tweet. And now he's like, well, actually I put them out last year. So you're punishing a media organization for believing the photographer who was mistaken or at least misstated what he meant publicly on Twitter. And even though the photographer did in fact put the photos out last year, calling them newly uncovered is still not inaccurate because he put them out last year and barely anybody saw them. He put them out again, Ocasio-Cortez retweeted them, and now they've gotten national news attention. So even this petty fact check, strictly speaking, is inaccurate. This is why trust in the media and these fact checking organizations is at an all time low. Because rather than do their job and tell the truth, we see time and time again that they have two sets of standards depending on what letter is next to the politician's name. If it's somebody they do not like, they will apply the strictest scrutiny to the pettiest of claims, no matter how obvious the metaphor or hyperbole is. If it's somebody that they do like, they will reframe the issue to something that nobody was actually arguing just so they can call that false and defend the party that they want to protect. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about this fact check down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social medias. You can support me monthly on Subscribestar and Patreon or via one-time donation through PayPal. This has been me talking about Snopes lying for Ocasio-Cortez. Till next time.